What is going on, everybody? Today we've got a special one lined up. We actually had to travel to the UK to see how the real pros out there do it. So today we're going to be hosted by a special guest painter, Damien, a.k.a. The Gov, who's going to be slamming some bass and clear on this old Mercedes. This is part of a minor restoration, so it wasn't anything too heavy, mostly dents and scratches and little paint defects that were removed and then primed and then sanded, and it's at the point where it's ready for paint, so I don't know why he went with the white primer, but I mean, this is the UK, they do everything a little bit differently over there. We actually had to order in some special left-handed paint guns. Okay, those are actually my guns. I brought them up because I was hoping that, um, you know, we could spray with uh, some fine equipment there. But uh, as it turned out, we didn't have the proper, well, we didn't have any PPS cups or SATA cups or anything, and all of my guns were required for use with a paint preparation system. So I had no hard cups, so we had to rely on his Techna guns. Now, we ended up going with the Limco Base Clear System, the Limco Supreme Base Coat which is a low VOC solvent and it requires a hardener before you can actually spray it otherwise it will chalk up and uh, cause problems down the road and won't hold up and look all pretty a few weeks from now so um, you gotta make sure you use the harder the only downside of course is that you can't store the paint once you put a hardener in it it's gonna harden and um, yeah so whatever's left over is gonna go bad so only activate what you need and that goes with any base coat, I guess, with the hardener. Um, so yeah, here we are. We got our Develbis now, the Techna gun, pouring it in through a filter. Usually with the PPS cups, you see that I, I tend to use the roll with. They have the liners, and same with the side of it. The filters all kind of built in, so you don't uh, have to pour it through the strainer. But anyway, here we go. So uh, spraying away. We've got a few parts on the stand here, and then the vehicle, of course, over in the corner. Now one of the biggest differences you'll notice in this video is we're not spraying obviously in the state of the art downdraft or cross draft booth. We are at the governor's manor so we're spraying in his homemade booth here which um, you know isn't really much of a booth but it's it's different. It's going to be a good learning experience because I've talked to a lot of guys that spray in the, the homemade booths and I, I have trouble relating to them so we're going to see some unique challenges here. We've already come across a few. Uh, you can see with the gun He's having a bit of a leaking issue because, uh, well, we ended up having to jimmy rig up some sort of uh, adapter for that Technic gun because he didn't have a hard cup for it either and it was uh, it was just kind of a mess here. Um, but uh, we ended up fixing it up. The gun's leaking, giving a bit of issues. But uh, yeah, like I said, we get through it. Um, same with, since we didn't have anything that would fit our Sabas and Iwatas, we couldn't use those guns. And if you're in a body shop, you tend to have all of this kind of stuff lying around in your spare parts drawers and whatnot. So um, that was the first sort of thing that jumped out, is just you don't have everything you need at the drop of a hat. So anyway, this is the first coat of base going on, and we've got the Governor Vision activated, so let's just sit back and see if he can teach us a thing or two here.
what's going on. It was pretty. Yeah, I think the purpose of the gas was to use, so the developers would hook up for the SATA cars. So you would think the SATA cars would be right in there, but it looks like it's leaking. It does look like it's leaking between. So we were having a problem with the, the adapter is leaking a little bit and I had nothing in my bag of tricks really to solve it and it was uh, becoming a bit of an issue so we had to use what we had at our disposal so uh, we came up with this and uh, as you can see that's a perfect fix. And we encountered the occasional uh, mosquito or two that ended up in the paint there and had to be sanded out. So there's a few minor defects that uh, occurred in the first coat. So we sanded a few spots out. There was a little bit of a fisheye issue on the front fender. Um, some sort of contaminant obviously on the fender, which we had to dust in there before we started on the second coat. Yes, trying to fight a leaky gun is not an easy thing to do. Trying to screw up what you really want to do. Okay, I'm coming. This is the second coat going on, and as you've just heard, um, a good painter never runs out of excuses. That's like the first rule of painting. Make sure you have your excuses lined up and tell as many people about them in advance as you can. Uh, I mean, you could say somebody was kicking up dust in the other room and that's why you're gonna have a dirty paint job. Or in this case, I mean, uh, you know, like guns are leaking, so I mean, I can't paint. I mean, you have to have yourself prepared for any, you know, any reason that your paint job might fail. Okay, but seriously, um, as the night went on, we had bugs coming in in larger and larger droves. I guess they just seen this room lit up and they all gravitated towards it. So if we were to open a door and try to step outside, it would have just probably been all hell breaking loose as far as um, you know, flies and everything trying to just gravitate to this paint job. So we had to be careful, but we did have to sand out an awful lot of bugs in the process. Luckily, this being black, you don't see them as much as you would on, say, if this was a silver and you had to do that many repairs, that could be a problem. If it was white, you would just see these bugs. Even if we clear over bugs, you're, you can still polish them out after and you're not going to see it. So, And that's not to say that you don't have this happen in state-of-the-art booths. You definitely do get the odd uh, fly that wanders into the booth or bee or something uh, or spider that comes out of the crack, usually right when you're about to clear. So, I mean, we have some experience taking care of those things and Damien he's been painting for an awfully long time just uh, so you know I don't know if I gave you much info on his background but he's uh, an experienced painter and uh, no stranger to the gun which I'm sure you figured out because he sprays pretty well I don't want to pump his head too much because uh, if I see him again I want to make sure I have something to criticize so um, you know keep practicing Damien let's watch this second practice coat and uh, we'll see how he makes it.
Now, after a few words of encouragement, we're ready to apply some clear. We've got the, we had three coats of base coat to achieve coverage, and a little bit more just because we had to do some repairs and fog in a few spots. And checking coverage again was a bit of a challenge because we didn't have our handy dandy 3M sun gun, which is fantastic for seeing to make sure that your paint's covered your ground coat. So we improvised a little bit with some work lights, and um, you know it, we were pretty confident. But uh, we put on that third coat. Maybe it only needed two, but you know, we when you don't have the proper equipment like a sun gun to check and make sure you have coverage, then uh, sometimes you just put on like an insurance coat just to be safe. So that's what we did. And we're back to the clear here. The LC4200, which is an economically priced all-around clear from Limco, which is actually one of my favorite clears that I used to use back in the day, and um, it actually performs really well. So, he's going to do his best here to keep the bugs out of this one because there's no more repairing them until the following.
So the first coat seems to be going on pretty well. We had to stop for a little refill. It's nice when you have the paint preparation systems, either 3M or SATA, whatever. You can have it all there right beside you. You snap on kind of a refill right there. But uh, I've had issues with that too. You do that too quick and you end up dripping some on the outside. They don't see, then all of a sudden, bam, it falls in your hood and then you're polishing out a big blob of clear coat. So luckily, that's not the problem here. But uh, yeah, so rocking the Develbus, the Tecna, and our adapter is holding up fantastic with our tape fix, which is, you know, pretty awesome. Another thing you can see that he's done, which is uh, a trick guys like to use when they're spraying big jobs like this over hoods, is wrapping a bit of tape around your waist, and I guess the same thing with his sleeve, just to kind of keep the paint suit from rubbing into the paint. You know, gravity takes over, and then all of a sudden you have a big mark that you're polishing out. So that is the method to his madness. See, so this tape can do a lot. So make sure you stock up on tape. So here's what it looks like off the gun, pretty slick and shiny. No runs that I observed, but I'm sure there were some problems and something he did wrong. Maybe underneath where I didn't look, he had some runs, but uh, I'm sure somebody caught something and we're going to hear about it in the comment se section, I hope, so we can uh, let the Gov hear about it. So let me know if you guys think the Gov has what it takes to be the UK's next top painter. And until next time, stay classy, enjoy these uh, final assembled shots. And obviously there's a, quite a bit more work that went in, into this after that. Besides the assembly, the polishing, getting rid of all those bugs and minor little dirt nibs that uh, are unsightly and make a paint job pop that much more. So that's probably about a day to two days that he had into polishing this thing. But in the end, it paid off. Looks pretty good. So uh, let's hear what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>